The world of fashion is known for producing extravagant, eccentric and talented artists, but few do it quite so well as one Frenchman. He's dressed the likes of Madonna and Yvette Horner, and created the wardrobes for Luc Besson's films and Régine Chopinot's choreography. He'll soon be the star attraction at his own review fashion show mashup in Paris, titled Fashion Freak Show. But right now he's busy revealing his haute couture collection for next winter. Enter Jean-Paul Gaultier. Images have always been there, but now we've arrived at a point where the image is omnipresent. There are a lot of people who see fashion shows as performances, so we put on a real performance. For this couture collection, we put on a show. I've always done quite theatrical shows, always with some mise en scène, even if it was always very light-hearted, even if we were just imagining a film casting. Well, there's already an element of mise en scène. Even the fact of choosing a model for the way she walks, that's a choice. That's an element of the mise en scène. Un choix, c'est une mise en scène. Jean-Paul Gaultier made a name for himself early on for his decidedly modern selection of models, women and men from around the world, an array of different ethnicities and looks. Backstage at a Gaultier show will always be a carnival of hairdressers, makeup artists and stylists. For Gaultier, action, glamour and diversity go hand in hand. It's great because we feel that we're being represented, that every type of looks is represented and celebrated. We're here to be beautiful and he makes us feel great. We're all unique and that's taken into consideration and it feels great. We're really grateful. Being backstage at a Gautier show is hard to forget. Feline amazing, magical. Feline, because in 2013 I wore one of his pieces that he made especially for me in leopard print. I remember he told me that we were like cats to each other. With Jean-Paul there are no rules. He doesn't fit the mold, he doesn't care, he does what he wants. He works with the people he wants to and he created the clothes that he wants to create. So there you go, he's unique. He doesn't try to pigeonhole himself. He has his style. Over two meters tall, 19-year-old Luca Marly is the son of one of Gautier's longtime assistants. This is his first show. It's an honor, an amazing opportunity. It's like a springboard, he opens doors. And what does Jean-Paul Gautier mean to you? He's an amazing designer with innovative ideas. That's why I'm so happy to walk for him. And he really mixes up different styles. I like that. Jean-Paul Gaultier loves playing with absurdist humour. This collection is intended for both men and women and is constructed around a single item, the iconic tuxedo, or le smoking in French. So only logical then that plumes of fake smoke accompany his pieces down the runway. Why tuxedos? Well, it's a man's suit originally that Monsieur Saint Laurent then adapted for women. That was the late 60s. Late 60s, yes. Some tomboys were already wearing it. Some women in Berlin in the 20s were already wearing tuxes. There were people like Georges Sand, characters who dressed in an androgynous way. They were a little more masculine, shall we say. So those are the various ways you can adapt the tux. There are very feminine tuxedos for the men, very masculine ones for the women. Call it a new femininity. These are women who are firm in their beliefs. They have things to say. Right now in fashion, you have to be politically correct. There are things you can and can't do. If you show the shadow of a breast, it quickly turns into a huge scandal. But there's also a new movement called Free the Nipple. So here, I found a sort of shield that protects me from outrage. It's a sort of bustier shield, which is kind of the opposite of what I was doing when I first started. Back then I was mainly doing bras. But now, just like their grandmothers, women are burning their bras. They're not afraid of showing the power of their breasts, of not wearing a bra, of feeling freer. This is also about the right to feel free. When he started out in the 80s, he was known as fashion's enfant terrible, but that was never quite true. He's always been admired and enjoyed by a wide audience. He's mainstream in that he does not try to be elitist. 
He's open to the public, I like that. He comes from the same place as me, from Arco, just south of Paris. I'd say he's a real Arco boy. His success is inspiring. If you put on a show, it's because you have things to say through your clothes. So you have to think about how to express that. What's the atmosphere you want? The music? How do you want it structured? It's like a piece of writing, a piece of visual writing. Jean-Paul Gaultier tells stories of men and women who are free to express themselves as they want, as at ease in their own skin, as they are in Gaultier's extravagant creations. My conclusion is that this is somewhere between dream and reality. Think halos, we can smoke without producing smoke. Not so bad, isn't it? Jean-Paul Gaultier, a creative genius who's as much a storyteller as a designer of improbable, sumptuous and often challenging collections. Inside the Americas, presented by Jeannie Godula. From North America to the southern tip of Patagonia, join us for a look at the latest political, economic, cultural and social news from the Americas. Inside the Americas, on France 24 and France24.com.